All my work is just kind of creating an interesting color palette. I've probably built, I don't know, hundreds of instruments and most likely 70 of them doesn't work. The stuff that I write sometimes are just impossible to play. Sound design is just fun. <laughs> it's like, how crazy can you get? Well, um, to me, sound design is a color. Um, I mean, I, I, approach, I approach even my music in a sense of kind of like a color palette of um, what, is, what is the color I'm trying to kind of inv uh, invoke in, in picture. Uh, so even, um, even with anything that I actually put on my music, it's all colors. So with sound design is that I'm trying to basically mix multiple colors in order for me to get some sound that I've... I'm hearing in my mind, and I'm going to try and actually kind of create that. So um, for sound design, it basically comes from anything that you could ever think of. It could be a slap on the table. It could be uh, water bottles jingling, or it could be a, literally a full orchestra recorded and then just turned up on its head. Um, so uh, for especially for me, I try to kind of create... Um, I'll, I'll go a little bit further back. It's like it's like if, if I want to get a sound of a bass, um, I could get a bass player to come in and actually record a bass line, uh, and it's, that's what it is. But isn't it cooler to be able to create that yourself? Uh, so like I go to synthesizers, and I'm like, all right, so if I could create this same exact sound of a bass, how is it interesting? Um, and how can I actually create that with a synthesizer? So then I record it, and then I'm like, all right, so now we have a bass and we have a synthesizer bass. So let's combine those together and get a new color from it. Um, so for me, it's all my work is just kind of creating an interesting color palette in order for me to do that. And it's all, sometimes these experiences work and sometimes they don't work. <laughs> so that's that's the fun part about it. It's like, it's like I've, I've, I've probably built, I don't know, hundreds of instruments and most likely 70 of them doesn't work. Like they, like my ideas just don't work or they're too out there or they're just like, all right, this is just, you're crazy. <laughs> and that's like, that's why my welder tells me all the time. He's just like, you are insane. What do you, why do you want to do this? And I'm just like, this is just fun for me. Um, and creating new colors that haven't been done before is just, that's, that's just what's the interesting part about it. I mean, and as far as, um, as far as manipulating samples, it's just kind of what, what you, sh I, I encourage everyone to do. Uh, it's what you're, it's what you're doing. Um, samples are created in order for it to be a template, in order for it to be inspiration. I feel like every time I've read those like end user things, it says, this is for inspiration purposes only, <laughs> something like that. Um, so for you to take a sample and not do anything with it, you're kind of, unless you're doing a full orchestral score, that's, that's the thing. So for me, it's like I take, I take my cello sounds and I mess around with them and get something cool with it. I take, um, I take my entire woodwind section and mess around with it. I take brass and actually throw it into a synthesizer patch and just kind of throw it into one of the analogs and stuff and just start manipulating and see what I come up with. Um, and for me, again, it comes back to the color thing. It's like, if the color right is right, it's right. Um, Lately, I've just been super minimalist with things, and I, there's a lot of solo piano things on my scores that you just you hear me just do literally one note of piano. That one note of piano has taken me three hours to come up with uh, because it's the sound that is more important than the note of the piano. Um, I mean, uh, there was one time that in the scoring stage there was three pianos sitting there. Um, they were all different colors. Um, and it was just like, this piano gives me this feeling, this piano gives me this feeling. And then, so it's like, even that single note piano has to convey the right emotional ideas. So sound design is just fun. <laughs> it's like, how crazy can you get? <laughs> It's, it's what comes first, chicken or an egg. I come up with the sound first. Uh, in, in my head, I have, I have a picture of a sound in my head. Um, however, I love organic sounds. I love being able to play that sound myself physically, uh, mentally, and just kind of be able to just sit there and actually touch this instrument. Um, some of these sounds that I come up with, I could easily create with a synthesizer. I could easily manipulate stuff. But uh, for me to be able to just be like, all right, I'm gonna come up with this idea. This is the sound I'm thinking of. 
and then I build the instrument, it's a completely different sound. <laughs> uh, so it, a lot of times it hasn't happened. Um, I mean, I um, I built this uh, big monster of thing uh, for Resident Evil, and it was basically the Ice Queen. It was two little cylindrical things um, that um, that basically resonate. The idea is a resonation. So um, once I built it, and I was like, okay, this is not doing what I wanted to do. So one of my one of my really close friends uh, told me to why don't you try dry ice? So dried ice, what it did to it is just basically dry ice. It's shaking all the time. There's just, uh, reverberation that actually happens with it. So we made the dry ice into a point and then we just slightly touched it and it just started shaking the entire thing and it was just making these really cool raw sounds uh, so that to me it was just like all right i can't make this with any other instrument yeah technically uh but like if you take a brass sound and you drop it down two octaves and then add a distortion pedal and stuff like that you could get something close to that but you're never going to get that sound and the the other things that for me that fascinate me are like resonations like playing something and recording it 40 feet away what is that sound what is how is the how is the sound going to travel there's a i mean there's a lot of um acoustic um it's like, uh, kind of basically the touch acoustic stuff that i mess around with for me it's um for me it's again it comes back to the idea of my crazy mind and the sound that i'm kind of looking for um there's a lot of times that i write stuff and it's just not playable um i've been told by musicians that the stuff that i write sometimes are just impossible to play uh they're either too fast or or they're in their extreme registers of the sample so for me it's a lot easier for me to pull up a sample library and just be like let's drop this down an octave or let's just take this down a fifth and see what it sounds like here. Um, like an example I was, uh, we were talking about was the idea of a bass clarinet. Uh, when you play really fast passages, there's a lot of stuff that is going to go click, 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 click. So in a sample library, you could literally EQ that out and then re-record it again with a real instrument and then just get the character or the, the textures of it. Or you could take another instrument and drop it down an octave, you get the same exact sound. So you're kind of like mo uh, modeling that sound that way. But for me is that um, I always like recording recording sounds, even if the sample libraries are perfect. Um, there are players, you could always record these sounds half speed and then speed them up. Uh, there's always those kind of tricks that you could do. But sample libraries to me are just um, are great tools, especially on a lower budget. You could just crank out stuff as fast as you can. Um, and uh, especially this day and age, it's like you're not getting a $600,000 movie budget to be able to go and record an orchestra. So these sample libraries have to be, and they better be good. Uh, they better be good in order for them to stand up to a director that is not so musically familiar with. Um, so if you play it for a naked ear without a comparison, you should be able to be like, all right, this is very close to what I'm hearing from it orchestral score versus, oh, this is also very close to it. And you should be able to be like A and B, they're very close. You could use a sample library to write a Beethoven orchestra, a Beethoven symphony, and you should be able to do that if, if your chops are good as far as se uh, sequencing and everything like that, and your sample libraries are good. So it's all, for me, it's just, um, it's a tool of inspiration to be able to just kind of test out your chops and to be able to go that crazy route, and then a musician tells you, no, you can't do that. Um, it also helps you with orchestration as well. If you don't know how to orchestrate, um, definitely a, a sample library is going to tell you, no, you can't write there. <laughs> it's just not possible for you to write, uh, write below whatever C0 is for a bass. It's just not going to be possible to do that uh, unless you do start messing around with the samples.